In summer 2024, we have something really exciting to look forward to in the night sky, and that is the arrival of a new star in our sky. We call it a nova. And this one in particular happens on a regular basis, but it's still very rare. It happens approximately every 80 years. I want to show you how you can find this in the sky. Uh, it hasn't happened yet as of my recording the video, but it's anticipated to happen sometime between now and the end of the summer, or roughly September. So um, first I'm going to show you where to find it, and then I'm going to show you exactly what's happening inside this, this star system. So this is today i'm making this video on april i'm sorry on may 22 and this is the sky as you'd view it from my um position on the earth but it'll look basically the same regardless of where you are as long as you're somewhere in the northern hemisphere so i'm going to sunset uh here happens to be a, a full moon right now and what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna look over towards the north all right and as i look towards the north here we go i'm gonna find the big dipper all right there it is. So most people know how to find the Big Dipper in the sky, right? There's these seven stars that curve in the sky. And one of the things that you learn early on in your study of astronomy, if you're learning positions of stars in the sky, is how you can use the Big Dipper to find Arcturus. So the trick is you look at the handle of the Big Dipper, so these three stars, and they form kind of an arc. Okay, And if you follow that arc in the sky, it will arc to Arcturus. And Arcturus is a very bright star, so it's relatively easy to find in the sky. And you can see that for me right now, it's approximately overhead. But if I was looking a little later in the night, I'm just going to go forward in time a little bit. You'll see that it, there it is kind of setting in the west. All right. Um, now I'm, I'm about midnight. Okay, so um, let's look over here. I'm just kind of rotating now, looking towards the west. I've got the Big Dipper, and I've got my Arc to Arcturus. Now... This nova is called T Corona Borealis. And if I put my constellation lines on and my constellation labels, you can see where Corona Borealis is located. So that constellation is, is right here, T Corona or Corona Borealis. And then the T references um, the brightness of the star. Like you would start with like ABC and you'd work your way through. So if you can find the Big Dipper, you can find Corona Borealis because you would arc to Arcturus and you kind of look up and to the left of where Corona Borealis is. Now, um, Arcturus, we can look at its brightness, its magnitude. It's a very bright star in the sky. And you can see it has a magnitude of 0.15. All right. It makes it one of the brighter stars in our sky. If I just look at some of the other bright summer stars a second for comparison, we can look over here and find Vega has a magnitude of exactly zero kind of by definition. All right. So Arcturus is a little bit brighter than, or it's a little bit fainter than, than Vega. Now, if we look at Corona Borealis, um, let's look at where I'm going to pull up a picture here for you to show where in the sky this nova is expected to appear. Um, here we go. Let me get this for you. So here's an image that shows Corona Borealis, and it shows where T Corona Borealis is. And that's a, a sense of how bright it will appear. Now we'll take a look at Corona Borealis right now, and let's zoom way in on there and see if we can find T Corona Borealis. It's there right now. You could see it with a telescope. And uh, let's see. I don't know if I'll even be able to find it because it's going to seem so faint, right? It's something like magnitude 12 right now. All right. But when it goes nova, it's going to be this incredibly bright star and it's going to reach, astronomers expect it'll reach a magnitude of negative two. That means it'll be like four times brighter than Arcturus or Vega. So it's going to be incredibly bright in the sky. It's going to be a big deal when it happens, right? You'll hear about it in all the news and you'll, you'll see it when it's bright that when you arc to Arcturus, there'll be a new bright star in the sky. So what's actually happening? Why, why does this star suddenly get brighter, so much brighter? And, and how does it happen on a regular basis? Well, here's kind of an artist's picture of what's actually happening in T Corona Borealis. So it's a binary system and it's an interesting binary system. You have a red giant star and you have a white dwarf star. Now the, the white dwarf star is a star that's effectively already died, right? And a red giant star is one that's on its way towards dying. So the red giant keeps getting bigger and bigger and material is getting stripped off 
of this red giant star and it's landing on top of the white dwarf. And you can almost think of it like it's, it's, it's building up and building up on the surface of that white dwarf, but it doesn't ignite into an explosion until there's enough material on the surface of the white dwarf. So it takes approximately 80 years for all that material to build up on the surface of the white dwarf and almost kind of, it reminds me kind of like a hot spring, you know, if you've ever been to a geyser, like old faithful, you know, it, it doesn't, it, it blasts on a regular basis, right? Like every 45 minutes or something, because it builds up the energy and then it suddenly explodes. And when it does explode, it becomes this really bright star for a period of time. So head on out. It'll be kind of cool. Like it'll be all the cooler when you hear it in the news and you go and you see it in the sky. It will be all the more special if you've been looking already and notice that it's not there. And then um, you see that it arrives later this summer. All right. Very exciting. And uh, adds a little bit of fun to our astronomy class this semester.